The Q50 will be the last sedan for the Infinity car brand ever. Next year, it will be killed off too. That made me sad because I like the Q50. So I wanted to know if there was anything I could do to stop that from happening. Maybe, just maybe, if I manage to improve its aerodynamics, Infinity won't cut it next year. So that's my goal for this video. Can I make the Q50 more aerodynamic and save the Infinity sedan line and the entire Infinity car brand? To do that, I simulated this original Q50 sports version at 72 kbh. Its aerodynamics is actually pretty good to begin with and much better than the average car. For example, this plane that cuts through the car is colored in the velocity with blue being slow and red being fast, and the lines show where the flow is going. The flow is excellent over the hood, with it not only staying attached very well, but also the boundary layer isn't very thick, which is great for energy saving. Perhaps one minor weakness of the hood is that it produces low pressure right at the front, which is because the front is very square. The windshield is pretty good too, with minimal flow deceleration. Only in the junction between the hood and the windshield do we see some trouble. Now, the roof is a tricky area because the flow does a great job staying attached over it completely, which definitely reduces its drag, but it has to accelerate a lot to do that. That comes with a lot of low pressure over the driver and that increases the lift which in turn reduces the car stability. I really like the boot though because the lip flicks up a little and that is just enough to create a little bit of downforce as you can see by the low pressure just ahead of it. Considering that this is over the rear wheels that is also good for handling. The underbody is generally good too with the flow staying largely attached and reducing low pressure to create more downforce. I quite like the diffuser because while it isn't that aggressive it definitely reduces the car weight size and hence the drag. So all these good regions on the car result in a drag coefficient of just 0.29 which is better than most. As a side note, the Affinity only produces 1.8 kilos of lift, which is great for a car which isn't designed with downforce in mind. But I don't want to touch the good regions, I want to improve a bad region. Some of these bad regions include the antenna, it is really flat at the back, and I don't know why they do that, because you can see behind it, the flow is much slower, and that increases the drag. In fact, I have some friends who work with this antenna design, and whenever I ask them why they make it like this, they just give me a weird look. For me though, I think the front lip under the car is the best candidate, because this region greatly affects the rest of the underbody, and modifying it doesn't change the appearance of the car. And we can see that the flow slightly separates here, which is because the lip is so sharp. That minor flow separation contributes to the deceleration of the flow over the underbody, and that greatly increases the drag. So if I can improve this tiny area, I can possibly save infinity. That's the goal. Now, how can I improve this area? There are a few options, from rounding the lip to adding a guide vein here to, to reduce the flow separation, but both of these will require infinity to make quite large changes and that cost money. Instead, I'm going to use small vortex generators because they are cheap and easy to install. It will cost infinity almost nothing, and they can add them to their cars without major redesigns. This is the configuration I've come up with. There are five vortex generators along the front lip, and ideally, they each create two vortices that rotate in opposite directions. They are very simple geometries, which will make it cheap for Infinity to manufacture. Will they save Infinity? Comparing the velocity plots of the original one with this new one, we see massive improvements to the underbody flow because the front separation is slightly smaller, but looking down the underbody, the flow is on average a couple meters per second faster, particularly around the middle region. That is great news because that means the wake is smaller and that should reduce the drag, but the diffuser is performing worse with these vortex generators, as you can see by the chaotic flow. This is a bad sign because the wake is a little larger at the rear and that could increase the drag. But what about the pressure over the underbody? How was that affected by these vortex generators? These pressure plots show that the blue under the car with the vortex generators is a little bluer than the car without them. That is great for downforce reduction, but I think that gain is cancelled out by the higher pressure over the diffuser, and that could hurt both the downforce and the drag. Once we save the Infinity brand, in the future, they could redesign the diffuser and make it perform better with the new vortex generators, or they could add more vortex generators at the start of the current diffuser to keep the flow attached there too. But there is so much more to the underbody flow than just this plane, so I cut through the wheels and looked from the underneath. And now we really see just how much these few objects affect the flow. Without the generators, the flow over the middle of the underbody is much slower, and the wakes from the front wheels fan out a little more, while with the generators, the wakes from the front wheels flow more into the rear wheels, which is good in that you're not wasting clean flow on the rear wheels, which will suck energy out of it anyway, so that is good for reducing drag. I would even say that the rear wheels have smaller wakes too, so those are all great drag reduction features. And looking at the pressure in the plane, the vortex generators have really improved the wheels on steadiness. The rear wheels are almost streamlined, which I've never seen on a regular car before. I mean, this vortex orbit shows just how few vortices are coming off the tires. Usually there's a steady stream of them, but here there's nothing off the rear wheels and the front ones are struggling to produce anything consistent. That is great news for drag. These videos show the drag produced and the vortex generators definitely reduce the front wheels drag. It's really impressive. So how was the overall drag coefficient affected? Did we do enough to save infinity? It comes in at 0.27, which is 7% lower without the generators. And and that is the lowest drag out of all the cars we've tested to date. The lift increased to 2.6 kilos, but it is still the lowest production car on the list. I've also sent Infinity an email about this improvement and hopefully they will see it, adopt it, and be saved. If you have social medias too, tag Infinity and let them know about it and help save them. Peace out, amigos.